Hey guys, let's take a look at quadratic equations, and this is the definition of a quadratic equation. First off, it's an equation, so there's an equal sign, and you're going to actually find the value of something. And the second part of it is, this is a polynomial that has its second degree, which means it has an x squared in it, or an a squared, or, you know, whatever letter you're doing squared. It'll have an x squared, and it'll have an x and it'll have a constant. In other words, just a, num just a number that doesn't have, doesn't have an x attached to it. It could be a negative number, it could be a positive number, whatever. That's what it looks like, okay? Don't worry about how complicated this looks. All you're worried about is that it's an equation and it has an x squared in it and it has a, you know, an x and another number in it, that's all. So just kind of get, get to a point where you go, oh, that's a quadratic equation because it's an x squared and there's an x in there, okay? The way we solve these is by looking at something called the zero factor theorem. You don't have to actually write this down, but just think about it. If P and Q are real numbers, all right? A real number is a number on the number line, right? If P, excuse me, if P times Q is zero, think about it. If P times Q is equal to zero. In other words, if you have two numbers, I don't know, one number is seven and one, one, one something else, and they multiply together to be zero, what it, in this case, what does that number have to be? Zero, right? Okay, well, let's say if the first number was something and the second one was 0.798, that equals zero. What does this number have to be? Zero, right? Okay, the third possibility is that both of them are equal to zero, right? So there we go. So if you have an equation, in other words, and you have two things timesing each other equals zero, then we have to figure that, well, it could be the P that's equal to zero, that would work, and it could be the Q that's equal to zero, that would work too. So we'll use these quadratic equations and figure out what the actual answer is to this X. It's really neat how this works. So look at this. First, let's go, let's go back to the old ways we've done. We have done three ways of factoring so far this year, okay? This is the first way. You tell me what do we do on this number one? How do we factor that? Yeah, I mean, you just take, what, the 5 out, right? That goes out first, okay? And then I got x squared and x to the third. That's going to be x squared I pull out. Then y and then y cubed, I pull out a y. Then we go, okay, what's left over when I do that? And it looks like that, okay? This one here, we've done two, right? The trinomials. We can break up into two binomials, okay? And, of course, these are always x's, okay? Look, this is going to be pluses, of course. And the question is, what two numbers multiply to give you 10? And they also add to give you seven. And of course the answer is two and five or five and two, whatever order you wanna put those in, okay? The third type of factoring is what we call the difference of two squares, remember that? Okay, these are two squares. A 16 is a square of four. A squared is the square of A. Uh, 81 is the square of nine. That is a difference because there's a minus sign. So look at there. We go, okay, well the square root of 16 is four. The square root of a squared is a. And I'm gonna have a plus here and a minus there, and the square root of 9, 81 is nine, and there is my answer, boom. All we're gonna do is throw an equals zero at the end of this, an equals zero at the end of this, an equals zero at the end of that, or whatever, okay? Then we'll solve. In other words, we're gonna do more than just factor. There's, oh, we factored that, we're done. Oh, we factored that, we're done. No, now we're gonna actually go like this and have a, oh, this equals zero. Okay, oh, oh look, this, this equals zero, or oh, this equals zero. So we can actually figure out, since it's an equation, we can solve for the thing instead of just factoring it. So let's take a look at an example. All right, so take a set, copy that down. All right, well, we look at this, this is a trinomial, and we know how to solve trinomials, and they, they will, you know, they're gonna make these so they all are solvable. So we're gonna just gonna write this whole thing over, and then at the very end, put equals zero. So, of course, we got an x, we got an x, we have, we need two numbers. They multiply, give you a negative, so you know it's gonna be a positive and negative. And they add a negative to it, and they add to give you three. Well, that's gonna be five, positive, and negative two, right? Okay, well, a question for you. If I have something times something equals zero, in other words, you know, something times, oops, forget that, something times something equals zero, well, what could be true? This could be zero, or, that could be zero, or both of them could be zero. So what we're gonna do is, instead of just stopping here, we're gonna take this and we're gonna go, okay, well, since I need to solve this equation, 
And if either one of those things is a zero, in other words, if, if this is zero, the whole thing works, right? Because zero times is zero. We don't care what's in there. It can be a picture of your grandmother. Zero times that is still zero. Sorry, Grandma. Okay. Also, if this is a zero, I don't care. This is a, you know, this is a Wolverine. A Wolverine times zero is still zero. So who cares? So what we're going to do is we're going to make this part zero. And then in another, over to the right of that, we're going to make this zero. Then we're going to solve for both of them. Then we got our answer. Okay. So in other words, we're going to go, okay, well, X plus five could be zero and it'll work, right? Or X minus two could be zero and it'll work. All right. So let's solve this. If X plus five is zero, X is negative five, right? If X minus two is zero, then X is two, right? So there, that's, that's our two answers right there. There we go. All right, we can, even, we can check these if we want to by putting them back in there and see if they work, they'll work. All right, let's try another one. Okay, so take a sec, copy that down. Pause if you need to. All right, this looks different because we're used to saying equals zero. This doesn't say equals zero. So we're gonna have to make it say equals zero. All right, which means this right side has to have nothing there, so which means we, we, means we need to move this over right there. So we got my x squared. Okay, I'm moving the 3x over, it turns into negative 3x. Keeping my negative 18, and I got a new equation that's equal to zero, because there's nothing over there anymore, equals zero. Okay, well you recognize this as a trinomial, and you're gonna go boom, boom, and then that's equal to zero still, and of course that's an x, and that's an x. You times it, and it equals negative 18, so it has to be a positive and a negative. All right, what two numbers multiply to give you negative 18, and add to give you negative three? be positive 3 and negative 6, right? There you go. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, okay, well, I'm putting this over here. x plus 3 is equal to 0. And the other possibility is x minus 6 is equal to 0. And, of course, if we do that, our, our two answers are negative 3 and positive 6. And there we go. <clears throat> okay, let's just try the 6. Just try it. 6 squared is 36, right? Minus 18. That equals 3 times 6. 3 times 6 is 18. Is that correct? Yes. Let's try the negative three. What's negative three times negative three? Nine, right? Nine minus 18 equals three times x. In other words, three times negative three, that's negative nine. Is nine minus 18 negative nine? You're darn tootin' it is. Excuse my language. There you go, that's how you do it, all right? Let's look at this one. This is a different one, although it has equal zero. This is uh, a Difference of two squares, right? Okay. Well, we know, forget the equal zero for a second. We know what to do with these, right? The difference of two squares. We take the square of that, the square root of that, excuse me. We take the square root of that and we just, you know, put them in those sets of parentheses. So that'd be three and then x, of course, which goes in both places. And of course, the square root of 100 is 10. There you go. Now we can, you know, go ahead and plop down the equal zero. And now we have two possibilities. Either 3x plus 10 is equal to zero. In other words, if that big hunk is zero, zero times is still equal to zero, no matter what's in there. And of course, the same is true for the other part too. 3x minus 10, if that's equal to zero, then it doesn't matter what this, this thing is over here, zero times anything is zero, so it works, okay. So let's go ahead and do the uh, equation solving here. 3x is equal to negative 10, and x is equal to negative 10 divided by three. And there you go. And you can probably tell pretty easily if this is just the opposite of that. So you're going to have, doing the same uh, setup, you're going to have this going to be positive 10 over 3. And there you go. There are your two answers. That's all there is to it. Okay. All right. Sometimes I'll use different terminology, like roots. Find the roots of this equation. Well, that just means solve it. What are the, what are the answers? Okay. Now, you look at this thing. This looks disgusting. I mean, what is this? I mean, what in the world? I, we've seen nothing like this, Okay. But once you start moving stuff back and forth, you'll see, oh yeah, I know what it is. Because if you move this negative 4x squared over here, it's 4x squared. Minus the 25, and what's on the right? Zero. Of course, this is a difference of two squares, right? So here we go. We got two squares here, that equals zero. The square root of four, the square root of x squared, the square root of 25, one's gonna be plus, one's going to be minus, and now we have two equations, right? So this part is equal to zero, 2x plus 5, 
And this part is 2x minus 5 is equal to 0. So 2x is going to be negative 5. And divide by 2, and we have negative 5 halves. And of course, I'm sure you can tell that the other answer is going to be positive 5 halves. And there you go. And if you, want, if you really want to check these, this one, I feel sorry for you. But you can. If you ever have extra time or you just want to impress your friends or maybe you're at a homeschool dance and you need something to do as you're sipping your watered down punch, solve the equation and you know, check it. Okay. Here's another way they say uh, find the answer. Find the values of x that satisfy this equation. Well, if you look at that hunk of junk, that looks, again, very weird looking, but you notice there are three terms, and which means this is going to turn into a trinomial. All right, let's move the x squared to the left. x squared plus x minus 56 equals zero. Okay, now we got our two binomials here. We got x, we got x, okay. We're multiplying, we get a negative, so we got a positive and a negative. Okay, what two terms give you, uh, multiply give you negative 56 and add to give you positive one. And of course, I'm sure you know your times tables, that's gonna be an eight and a seven. And you might even be able to do this in your head at this point. Okay, you tell me, what are the two answers for x? If x plus 8 times x minus 7 equals 0, what are the two answers? The opposites, right? Be negative 8 and positive 7. Those are your two answers. It is kind of weird. If you put this in, put this in the original equation, they will work. So, kind of strange. Okay, all right. Let's look at this one. This one's slightly different. Well, what do we do first? You tell me. What needs to happen here? The 9 needs to go over, right? So we got 3x squared minus 6x minus 9 equals 0. Now, if you notice, look at the x squared. What's different about the x squared than all the other ones you've done on your papers before? Well, look at it. What's the difference? There's a 3 there, right? Okay. So we don't need that there. We need to get rid of that thing. So we're going to soon divide everything by 3. And these will always work out. So they're nice and neat. So if you divide the whole thing by three, by three, by three, by three, that's a three. You'll get x squared. You'll get negative two x. You'll get negative three and you'll get a zero and there's a nice you know, way to start right there. Okay, Okay. pause it. Go ahead and solve the rest of this and then come back when you're done. Okay, I'm assuming you've unpaused it. We have a negative here, so that's going to be a positive and negative. Well, there's only, only two factors of negative 3. And they're going to add to give you negative 2, so there has to be a negative 3 and a positive 1. And I'm sure at this point you can probably tell me right there what the two answers are, which will be negative 1 and positive 3. And there you go. Okay. All right. Let's uh, look, look at the practice problem. Go ahead and pause it and uh, try A, and we'll come back. All right, I'm moving the 5x over, moving the 24 over, leaving me with zero. All right, that's a trinomial. I bounce that into two binomials, so there you go. And I need two numbers that multiply to give you a negative. That'll be a positive and a negative. They add to give me positive 5 and multiply to give you a negative 4. So it's going to be positive 8 and negative 3. And I can, you can tell, I'm sure, immediately the answers are the opposite of the 8 and the opposite of the negative 3. There we go. Okay. Okay. Give uh, B a whirl and see what you get. Okay, let's finagle this thing so it looks, you know, like a decent equation. X squared stays there. The negative 8x moves over and becomes positive 8x. Negative 48 stays there and we get a nice big fat zero over there. Okay. Well, another two binomials, right? I got an X. I got an X. I got a negative... Uh, product, so I need a positive and a negative. That adds to be 8. Factors of that will be positive 12 and negative 4. So I have my two answers, the opposite of those, so negative 12 and positive 4. Bingo. Okay. All right. That's it for today. You guys take it easy. Have a great week or day or whatever. Weekday, day, week. Uh, I love